essentially what we are seeing is uh, an increase in the frequency, and we can demonstrate that, um, of fires. Uh, we're also seeing a lot more um, interaction between humans and fires. So it's climate change, we believe, is one of the factors. It's not the only factor that's uh, affecting the instance of fires. So the more people who go out and recreate in the forest, the greater the risk is that someone's going to be careless with a campfire. And what we've seen and what we're predicting is that the fire season is going to get longer at either end. So that's going to have a fairly major impact on the government policies on who they retain and for how long. And then we are actually also seeing increased severity um, being predicted. So the fires will burn hotter. That's also partly related to the nature and availability of the fuel in the forest. So if we've been very successful at suppressing fires for a long time, we get a lot of fuel buildup, and so the fires would also be more extreme because of that, as well as because of the drier and warmer conditions. We are likely to see this across most of Canada, and we're certainly seeing it in the Western USA as well. We can um, create models that say, well, if we continue releasing CO2 in the way we're doing, we expect the temperature to go up uh, the following amount, and that's going to have the following implications down the line regardless of what we do to try and control CO2 emissions. It will still get warmer because there's a lag effect. Um, and we are likely to see what has been called climate weirding, uh, which basically means the climate is behaving weirdly. Um, we're getting things that we didn't really expect, like the very cold spring that we had this year. Um, and that's because we are disrupting the normal patterns of uh, weather that would come in primarily from the Pacific. Kelowna, Penticton, and Vernon. Pick the edition you want to read in the top left corner of the yellow masthead.